Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Tropic and Trade Group, and this is your end of day recap for Tuesday, November 12th. Um, this will probably be the last um, end of day recap uh, this week, uh, as I will be doing a little bit of uh, traveling uh, towards the end of this week. But, um, uh, you know, a little bit different price action today. Risk disclaimer in front of you, by the way, everything that we're going through is for information purposes only, not giving out any advice or recommendations. Please just read the full risk disclaimer right there. So, a little bit different today. Um, you know, one of the things that we said, um, um, going into this week was that we've got monthly options expiration. We've got some inflation reports this week. Um, tomorrow we get the CPI and we get the uh, PPI report on Thursday and then we get retail sales on Friday. So, you know, there's probably a little bit of hesitation um, with these two reports. Um, they're looking for a 0.2% for tomorrow. I, you know, um, I'll just kind of leave that there. I'm not going to get into what, what I think the CPI report is tomorrow because I want to cover today's price action. But, um, you know, that with monthly op options expiration, it makes sense that, you know, that you're going to see a little volatility this week, right? That it's not going to be just straight up every day. And there's going to be some checkbacks. And, you know, it it's it hasn't really been, um, you know, every, well, it, it's been a very, very good rally since Wednesday. Um, has it been an everything go up rally like every single day? No, it hasn't. You know, there's there, there's certainly been some areas lagging and there's certainly going to be some fake outs in some some areas, but that's just normal, right? I mean, you know, especially I think some areas have really gone up a lot and, you know, there's going to be probably some profit taking too. So just a reminder, you know, look, like look at the IGV ETF, right? That's the software ETF. It's been one of the strongest ET uh, groups out there over the last week. There's been there's been a lot of uh, momentum in that group, but um, you know if you've been able to make money in some some of these um, some of these areas, some of these names, that's excellent, right? But just a reminder, as I kind of said and alluded to probably in the last couple of days, make sure you're taking profits um, in some things too. You know, again, you could let some things run. Um, you know, and again, it depends on your conviction and your time frame. But, you know, other names that you're just in for a trade, you know, just keep that in mind. And, you know, I've been doing that. You know, I, I mean, I took profits. I was in, um, you know, and I mentioned this on Twitter yesterday. I try to like, you know, obviously, um, I don't spend that much time, as much time putting out details on Twitter as I do in the Tribeca Trade Group trading room, because that's where I spend the majority of time. But I, I try to put little blurbs out here and there on Twitter. But, um you know, and, and I also I, I would I'll just say this really quickly. Like if you're trying to trade off people on Twitter, um, you know, I think that's very difficult because you're not getting the picture, you know, really a clear picture of anything. So, um, you know, I would make sure that you that you do try. It doesn't have to be my you know trading service, but try other people's trading service. It's worth the money, in my opinion. Right. And, and, you know, again, try different ones, but there's too many people, I think, that, that are trying to get information, like what people are trading and where they're taking targets and, you know, all of that kind of and, and all that kind of thing on Twitter. Now, you can learn a lot from Twitter, but you can get a lot of bad stuff, too. And, um, you know, I, I saw last night, you know, for example, like just just to the, and, you know, here's one of the things that I do use uh, Twitter for it's sediment. You know, when people are talking about this stock or this name is going up to X price, you know, first of all, nobody knows that, right? So don't confuse this, um, you know, people with big egos with actually what is going to happen. So um, make sure that you're you're still a risk manager, right? The best traders out there, the best investors out there, the risk managers. So you've got to have that, that process down and understand, you know, what you're doing. So, you know, um, this month has been great, but again, reminder that stocks are not going to just go up in a straight line, right? And we talked about this in yesterday's video that the month to date gains so far are probably much more than what people expected. So what happened today? Um, you know, breath was not very good. It was actually the first time that we've seen breath um, really kind of, it was, the, it was the weakest breath, breath excuse me, that we've seen um, since the election. Right. So, um, it, you know, is it the end of the world? No. And the other thing that, you know, I was kind of observing today 
is whether how soon buyers would come back in. So here's what I'm referring to. You could see that you know this morning and and the the selling kind of dried up a bit, but you could see how many times we hit negative 1,000 ticks, which are pretty extreme. You go back the last 10 days. Now we had this you know on the on the um towards the end of the month and the on the first of the month, but you know we really haven't seen that that selling, um, which is basically what we had today. You know, and and I re would refer to that as profit taking, right? Another thing. That, that's a little bit of a concern. Um, and by the way, we've got a number of, of names blasting off again to on, on earnings, which is again has been has been pretty tremendous. But you know, look at the UUP ETF. So again, all I'm trying to insert here is just a little bit of reality into people's thinking because um, the dollar has been climbing now for a couple of months. Now we did hit some resistance. So the the positive here is that we find that we did take out this upside VPOC, but we've done it pretty quickly, right? So that's a pretty big, you know, it's a pretty decent move in the dollar. And I would be getting very concerned if we start to break above those November highs. Now, I do think that this version point of control being taken out, um, that's an area of digestion. You know, look at what the last time that, uh, you know, a version point of control was taken out. Right. There was a big drop thereafter. So, you know, bear that in mind. TLT is another bit of a concern right now. Um, whoops, I've got the wrong symbol up here, too. So so I don't particularly like now we haven't taken out last week's lows. But again, you know, just yields are going, um, you know, they're going higher. There's no change in trend. Right. So, um you know, bear that in mind. That, that's a that's a, that was another big move today. Down what TL two is down one down one and a half percent and gets drops back below that November value area. All right. So um, those are a couple things that I'm watching. You know, in terms of um, the price action today. You know, another thing that I said is that we've been extent short term extended. Right. So by the way, like yesterday, spy didn't really do much. Same thing with the queues yesterday. So we're checking back to the 20 day moving average. Um, I will give you a level to watch in this video. And that's um, again, this is short term. This is just for this week. But I would keep an eye on this. And that is uh, 593.57. So I thought we might come down and touch that today. We almost did. Um, but regardless, buyers kind of stepped in a little bit towards the end of the day. Qs, I thought that this might look like an inverted, um, not an inverted head and shoulders, but a head and shoulders. But we we came, we snapped right back, right? So left shoulder, head, right shoulder, and we broke the neckline. But, you know, we came right back. And there is some support here at 508.73. So we're kind of just right back into this, right? IWM, on the other hand, gave back a lot of the gains. You know, remember, we gapped up big time, right? And then we we gravitated higher, um, but uh, we we kind of fell back here a little bit. So it's not the end of the story uh, for IWM. You know, we are back to this virgin point of control. Remember, volume likes to, you know, price likes to kind of hang around those virgin point of controls a bit. So that's what you got right now, right? Is a little bit of digestion. We're basically right back to where we were on Wednesday's close for IWM. I know that's probably shocking to some people, but we're just back to where we were on the close on Wednesday. So we really haven't, get, you know, net net, we haven't gone anywhere since the gap up in IWM. All right. So that's what's going on there. Um, so let's talk about a couple of these names after hours here that, that are moving higher. Um, Kava, nice earnings beat. Um, that's the second quarter. Like, I think that's the second quarter in a row that this name has uh, moved up uh, decently. Spotify also, um, you know, Podcasts are get are getting a lot of attention right now, but you know Spotify has that market and um and look at the move here in Spotify. So again, it's another one of these situations where if you think the stock has run up a lot, right? And um you know again, I stick with trends, right? Because I know price action. Uh, you know, price there's positive things that we don't know always in a stock price that's telling us things. And Spotify ran up into the earnings report and is going higher, right? Again, why do I bring this up? I see too many people. We were talking about this today in pre-market prep. Uh, we were talking about so many names that are in downtrends, right? And there's so many folks, I think, on speaking of Twitter, that are looking for reversals and things. I'll tell you, what normally happens is you don't get reversals. You get bounces and downtrends, and then they resume going lower. What can change downtrends? Better earnings, much better, you know, so fundamentals need to change. So I just want to bring that up because I see too many people looking for, you know, they started to gravitate more towards stocks that have been really beaten up. These things can all bounce. They could be great. And this is what I was referring to in the beginning of the video. Don't overstay your welcome. Some of these things can bounce. 
but the, unless the fundamentals have really changed where they've where they've where they have all of a sudden had a, have had a much better order or they're interesting or they're introducing a new product most likely it's just a bounce and a downtrend all right so just to just to keep that in mind um a couple names that i thought were interesting um for the day um you know i kind of put some momentum names on my watch list just again just to kind of keep tabs on them because they're extended um i actually like the look of this you know and again these are these are high momentum names but i like this arista labs um, notice how I kind of drew this trend line at the previous close of the highs um, or the previous, I guess this was the open on this particular day, but notice how it checked right back. That's a neat little check back. Now, again, it's up a lot, um, but it may have more to go. Also notice on the one hour chart, it held 86.89. So I'm going to leave it there, guys. I'm going to make this video kind of short tonight or try to. Um, guys, have a great night and I'll see you tomorrow.